Today's video is all about how I fueled my most recent Dublin Marathon. I was third place and I want to talk you through what I did those couple of days before but then also race morning and during the race. What was I taking during the race? How did I make sure that I didn't fade towards the end of the race in terms of pace? Because we can only store so many carbohydrates and once you run out of fuel you must rely on something to get you to that finish line. Let's talk about how I did that. And always, always, always make sure you're fueling training, recovery, and racing. Let's get into why it's so important and how you can start to make some changes to your training and hopefully race plans to get better at running. Usually the number one reason for hitting the wall in a marathon is running out of carbohydrates. That means that during your training buildup, you haven't trained your body to use fat as fuel well enough at the speeds that you want to run or perhaps on race day you're not fueling right. I think one of the problems that everyone sort of comes up against on race day is you might have a strategy going in but then once you're out on the course and you're in that rhythm sometimes we forget to take our drink or sometimes it upsets our stomach a little bit and so we decide I don't want to take my drink. You must understand that in the marathon, your fuel and strategy is a prescription. It's not optional. You must, must, must fuel in order to get to the finish line because the very, very long story short is you can only store roughly about one hour 40 worth of carbohydrates and the rest of the marathon must be fueled with fat. Your body needs to be capable of converting fat in the fuel to move you forward. And that's super, super important, or guess what? You hit the wall. So what can we do about it? So today's video is sponsored by Ketone IQ, and I'm very excited to talk about this product because I believe it can help in that process, not just of let's not hit the wall in the marathon, and I use it in double marathon, so it's very relevant today's video, but also for recovery within training, there's psychological benefits. I often struggle sometimes with psychology. I have ADHD. And so when I learned more about Ketone IQ, I had seen that it was being used heavily in the Tour de France. I mean heavily, likely almost every team at this stage. I wanted to know more. When I started to see some of the crossovers between how it was being used in the Tour and, and running training and marathon running, but then also some of these mental health little benefits or big, big benefits, then it made sense for me to, you know, find more about this product. I ordered some myself, I used some myself, then I actually made contact with Ketone IQ to try to get a bit of a sponsorship out there. Sponsorship for me, but also I did want to share how this product can be used and why it should be used because it will help marathoners probably two and a half hours, three hours, three and a half, and all the way up, likely more than it will help me. So Dublin Marathon, the strategy was 80 grams of carbs per hour. The way you go about using your carbohydrates in the marathon is by almost, it's not a funnel effect, but it's, it's almost in this micro dosing way. That's how you prevent insulin response which gives you this high, sort of hypoglycemia feeling where you're all dizzy and lightheaded. So if you've ever stood on the start line of a marathon, which in a minute it's gonna be a hands up situation, if you've stood in the start line of a marathon and you've sunk a gel down your throat and then in the first mile or two you felt garbage, it's because you made a right mess of your fueling strategy literally before the race even started. That hypoglycemia response is the body realizing that it doesn't need that full gel at that moment and it's trying to store it while you're trying to run. So you do it in this funnel way where with 10 minutes before your warm up, before you start your warm up, you start taking on the equivalent to 60 to 80 grams per hour of carbohydrates. It depends how much you've trained your body to do and how much you're willing to carry in the race, gels, etc. More 10, this video is not sponsored by Morten, but they do now do a gel that you literally wouldn't even have to carry that many. So there's products out there and companies out there that will help with that process. So I mix up 
80 grams. I'm actually up to like sort of 80 to 100 now because I've trained my body to do that. I mix up those 80 to 100 grams in a 500 meter, milliliter bottle and I add in two shots of my ketone IQ. With 10 minutes to go before my warm up, I start sipping on the bottle. It's sipped in a calculated way, as in I have permanent marker rings around my bottle of how much of that I need to drink per 15 minutes. And I do it in that sort of slow funneled way, like we talked about, that kind of micro dosing concept. By doing that, you're, you're only giving the body the carbohydrates that it's gonna need at that moment of time and not too many. Then the gun goes, and what I do is I continue that strategy, that 80 to 100 grams, if you haven't practiced, try a bit less, but I, I continue that strategy by picking up a bottle every 5K and I take, like I said, with the permanent marker rings, I take the amount that I know I need and then I always have a gel strapped to my, my bottle. So I take the gel off and then I probably get 3K further down the road and I take that little bit of my gel, which is topping that up. In other words, it's a constant top up. It's not gulping in as much as you can and then moving on. It's, it's little and often, little and often. That's what works the best. I've tried all these glucose monitors, everything that you could imagine, and this works. So really start practicing this in training. But why I, I use the ketones and what the purpose within the marathon of these ketones are, like I said, you will hit the wall if you don't top up your carbohydrates. But the beautiful thing about the ketones is they're helping to spare the carbohydrates. And it doesn't matter if you're using the energy that's coming from the ketones as for the brain, as in dealing with the nerves, the anxiety, the stress of race day, the mental exertion to cool the body down. That's one of the big things on race day, you're getting too hot. What do you, what do you think the body normally uses to cool itself down? Energy, c c calories. And so I see the ketones as this dual energy source and I don't mind whether, you know, it's the, the ketones kind of cooling me down or, or the, you know, dealing with the sort of psychology of it all. All it's doing is saving my carbohydrates. If I can save those carbohydrates and I can last that bit longer, let me tell you a fact. In Dublin Marathon, it was really hard, really hard. I was kind of surprised at the heart rate I was running at and the effort I was running at that I didn't hit the wall. I'm, I'm, I mean that. I was pushing at a level that I don't think I've pushed at before and I remember around mile 12, mile 13, looking down, seeing my heart rate 173, 174, and I'm thinking, mm, <laughs> might be a little bit too early to be at that kind of effort. And when you're at that kind of effort, guess what? You're burning more fuel. But maybe because not only during the race, but also in the couple of days before I had been using the ketones, all I might have done you know all that nervous energy, how's tomorrow gonna go? Oh my God, I'm a bit stressed about this, stressed at the race hotel, that kind of thing. That all takes away calories. It all takes away energy. It's like filling up your car with, with petrol or diesel to go do a drive the next day. And then your car being a bit stressed and every time it got a bit stressed, there was a bit of a leak. Your car having to go organize stuff or go for dinner or whatever. We use, so even though we do the carb loading process, we still use a lot of those carbs for everything that we're, we're doing within that 24 hours to 48 hours before the race. Nervous energy, walking around, it doesn't matter. I genuinely believe that topping up my ketones, I was using probably one to two shots every sort of three, four hours. I reckon I was just doing enough to spare some of that glycogen, even before the gun had even gone. Then I'm sparing glycogen in the warm up by having some that morning or I'm sparing glycogen, not just because of the warm up, but also the stress and the nerves. It's just an extra energy source to save the carbohydrates. The longer you're out there beyond one hour 40 minutes, the more you will rely on sparing that glycogen tank. If you can spare that glycogen tank, you'll be able to run faster later in the race. So that's how I use it. I also use it for days after hard sessions because I don't necessarily want to get up two to three hours before training. I don't always feel like that, like as in like every day. 
I don't want to get up and have breakfast two to three hours before. So I get up maybe an hour before I have a coffee. I have two shots of the ketone IQ and I go run. And then I'm not doing the run fasted or kind of depleted of energy. I also use it post training because again, it helps with recovery sort of side of things. And it also means yet again, if I can use it post training and the ketones can perhaps fuel me doing this video, fuel me editing this video, well then those carbohydrates are saved for training. Have a look into it. There's a link in the description. There's some discount in there. This is a sponsored video, but I honestly would talk about this for free. It is a very, very good product. And I don't promote loads on this you know, channel, except for my running school, which I always talk about, but this is a very good product. So I hope you enjoyed that and take care.